two professional series pianos from two of the top brands. We have the Yamaha U3 and we have the Kawai K500. Top tier pianos. We're really excited to hear them and compare them. Stay with us. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in beautiful downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, sign up for notifications, leave us some comments, like our videos. We really like interacting with you guys and we appreciate all feedback and any suggestions that you might have. Ted, real exciting today. Oh, it is exciting. We have two of the highest level instruments behind us. I, when people talk about an upright piano, there's there's no higher comparison than a Yamaha U3 or the K500. It was the K5 before, but these these top tier, like I said, top tier instruments, highly detailed in the construction. They're both handmade in Japan um, and just very high level. You've played them for many years. You've played U3s, I know, for okay. a long time. And the Kawhi has changed names a couple of times, but that same kind of height, that 52 inch, 51 inch instrument. What, do you, what, do, what are your initial takeaways? My initial takeaways are that both of these are just phenomenal instruments. They're great. Any, any aspiring pianist would love to have one of these. As a beginner, it'd be more than a dream come true. Mm -hmm. But uh, as an intermediate to an advanced student, this would be one of the things just, when you upgrade from this piano, you're going to a six foot plus grand piano because anything less than that is not going to gratify. You're better off with one of these. And, and I'm, I've heard you explain this before, but um, the soundboard, which is your acoustic speaker of an instrument, what is on something that's, so the, the, different, the height difference in these is 130 centimeters versus 131 centimeters. I know it says an inch. For us here in America, we see a, an inch different. We think, oh, that's a pretty significant. But then you see it's only actually a centimeter in the way they converted it. These are very close in the same size. But really that soundboard, which is your acoustic speaker, what, what does that say when your instrument is this big? Well, when your instrument is this big, uh, particularly in an upright piano, you're looking at a soundboard that covers more real estate space mm -hmm. than say a five to a five and a foot, uh, five and a half foot uh, grand piano. And why is that? Well, there's an arch cut inside a grand piano. And so, so you have the amplifier and speaker uh -huh. for both of the upright pianos. Is covering more space. Yeah, so you guys are familiar with a baby grand piano. It has that cutaway in the back, and uh, it's not a full square. Which, if it, I didn't, I wasn't very good at math, but but if you if you know anything about math, the surface area is bigger when it's got equal sides. Correct. Um, and so so that's, that's a lot of times people ask a professional level piano. Why are they all this size? Why are they always bigger? Why can't they just make a very big one? Um, so the string length gets longer as you move up but also the soundboard, which is your acoustic speaker, just gets a louder, more full tone. Um, and uh, really, you guys will hear it today on the video. We're gonna play both of them back to back. Um, but other differences between these two, there's the one centimeter. Um, I know you, you love the way a piano feels. The action's very important that's, to you. That's what's, that's like when you drive a car, it's a combination of the foot and the hands on the steering wheel plus the response that the machine gives you. Same thing with driving, uh, with playing a piano. Mm -hmm. And so what's the biggest difference between these two? Uh, the biggest difference that I notice up front is that there seems to be um, a little bit more of a faster, quicker response on the Kawhi, and I attribute that to the carbon fiber action. Um, the problem I have is that I've been playing Yamahas for a very, very long mm -hmm. time, and I used to have Kawhis. I've played Kawhis since my teen years. And Kawhis have made a number of changes to the action and also the hammers and the felting and all that over the years. This has become one of my favorite pianos. It's very cool. The Millennium 3 action is what you're referring to. It's, it's a great action, um, but it does have a lot of carbon fiber. I think over a thousand parts of carbon fiber. We are going to open up these pianos and show you guys because they're just beautiful on the inside. Yamaha, very, very much traditional in a wood design. Great action, tested, tr tried and true. You see this in churches, you see it in music studios, recording studios, if they have room for only an upright, you're seeing a lot of U-series. Like you said, Kawhi's whole idea is the future of piano. Um, and I think you really see that with the K500. You see these components that they've transformed over time and they put carbon fiber in it. They've updated um, the way they completely construct the instrument. You get an extra back post. They're really trying to push technology on 
an acoustic piano, which a lot of us think of as an old world instrument. Right. Um, so just really neat that you can see these comparisons. Um, if you haven't played them before, we highly recommend doing that. The feel is completely different, like you said. Um, but just, they sound amazing. We're gonna play them for you here in a minute. Um, Ted, anything else that you really love about any, either of these instruments? I know uh, size-wise they're very close, action-wise, a little bit very different. I'll tell you one thing about the tone that I've always liked about the larger uprights, particularly the largest ones being manufactured right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it is the break between the bass and the treble bridge. And there's a difference between the strings go this way for the camera, mm -hmm. this way for the bass, and then the other way uh, opposite for the treble. And where the bridge breaks, so where do you go from the rounded strings to the straight strings that don't have any wrapping on them? And it's generally on most spinets and uprights, you can tell where the break is at by the tone and the touch, the combination of those two. And these pianos is very, it's, it's indistinguishable. You have to really look at the thing and with, it, with it open. We can demonstrate yeah, that. Yeah, that's awesome, that's awesome. Uh, I know I look partial from the camera. I'm wearing a Kawhi shirt today, but I actually am wearing a Yamaha watch. So I, I feel like I'm supporting both brands here. I don't think there's a wrong answer when you're looking for uh, a professional level instrument. These are both from two of the most prestigious manufacturers, both made in Japan, highly detailed, Eight amazing, amazing instruments. Uh, we're really excited to, to play them for you here, so we won't keep you waiting any longer. Ted, let's, let's play these pianos. Let's have a listen.
So Patrick, what'd you say? That sounded amazing. I was off, off camera listening um, while you guys were listening to just an incredible, full, mature sound from both these instruments. Um, very, very present. Um, I think it's one of those characteristics of a high quality professional instrument. You're able to pull out passages when you're playing and you're able to really put, uh, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Just slight different nuances between yeah, the two yeah, in terms of the tone. You can carry the melody through what you're playing and, and it just really shines where you want it to shine. Um, I just, I, amazing sounding. What, the action, did you feel a big difference? Not really. They, they, I, like I said, I can't imagine having one of these pianos in your home to grow and you know, advance on and being jealous of the other one because either one of them is just going to do what it's supposed to do. I, I think a lot of it, and I always mention this to clientele and even strangers when they're talking about pianos, personal preference has a lot to do with it. It's a combination of what you hear, when you hear it, and how it responds to your touch. Exactly. I, I, I really enjoyed hearing you play those different pieces on that. Um, we were able to compare them side by side. I know a lot of you guys were asking about that. We have done the comparison on a U1 and a K300, which are just the notch right below this on sizing. They're still part of the same professional series and line from these manufacturers. But Ted, from this point, does it? Do you go up on an upright? Is there any? Is there any advanced upright that's going to be a better upright than these professionals? The only thing you're going to get on an upright that's going to be better than this is a fancier uh, looking cabinet. You can pay more for for a fancy appearing piano. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. It's. I don't know of anyone that makes a piano uh, that is in range with these in terms of what the track record on both of these instruments are is really amazing with colleges, universities, and students. Um, and to upgrade from this piano, like I said, is at least a minimum of a six foot plus grand piano. So professional grade, not like an entry line, a, a foo foo fancy looking piano, but I mean a real professional grade, like a C series Yamaha, or at least the- um, The GX series. The GX mm -hmm. series. So just incredible sounding. Again, the, the similarities between these two, 10 year warranty from two of the top manufacturers uh, they sound incredible. The biggest difference, I think, is that Millennium 3 action. Uh, you get a little bit more lightweight, some, some harder materials with carbon fiber versus straight wood, um, and there's less room for uh, humidity and temperature to, to change your instrument at all. Uh, thank you again, Ted, for playing this. Gotcha. It sounded amazing. Um, let us know what you guys think. I know you guys heard different things than we heard here. Um, and so let us know what you think. If you've played these before, maybe leave some comments, leave some insight for those who are still looking for the perfect instrument. We are Alamo Music Center here in San Antonio, Texas. This is Ted Barcelo. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, sign up for notifications, like our videos, and leave us comments again. We love to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you for watching.